Well, happy 2020, everyone. It's the, the time has come to say goodbye. I'm just making a really quick video here. Uh, it's not a quick video at all. It's going to take bloody ages. We finally reached it. We got to the end. The end of what felt like a very hard year for a lot of people. Um, I'm going to be completely honest. It's been brilliant for me. And what a year we've had for music. It's been absolutely, absolutely sensational. This is the guy that... This guy made it for us this year, didn't you, baby boy? Yeah. You say hello, everyone. <laughs> hello. <laughs> I was looking through my playlist of the day, and I've... And I was looking through my library the other day and I thought, right, I want to do a top whatever. Let's do a top 50. So I added all the records that I thought absolutely need to be in the top 50. The problem is that the playlist was 151 tracks long. 152 tracks now, actually. Which is a problem. It's a real problem. So I have gone through and it take it took me hours, but I have cut that down to the 50 best records. And I want to really quickly just run them through what my favourites are. There will be a link to this playlist where you can go and listen to it. We also have a link to the long list if you want something a bit more long form. But I thought it'd be really good to really quickly talk about all the favourite records of the year. Bosh through it. So in no particular order, I want to talk about my favourite records of this year. Links to the playlist to listen along will be below. Starting with the incredible Ninth Wave. Um, I discovered them kind of earlier on this year. This band, they're amazing, they're from Glasgow. We put them in uh, an episode of Music Club FM. There were two tracks that I loved. Um, Come Down Forever is amazing, but I have chosen I'm Only Gonna Hurt You, which is one of my favourite records by them. And this, oh God, I really hope they end up playing festival season next year because I have thoroughly enjoyed this EP they've released and I've just, I'm really excited to see them. I just really want to see him. Next, Lauren's favourite discovery of the year is the incredible Selhurst Park by Wild Front, who are from Crystal Palace. Uh, Selhurst Park uh, are is the football stadium of Crystal Palace. And um, again, we put this in an early episode of Music Club. It's just a wonderful, wonderful record. Really ethereal and dreamy, whilst also being quite epic and indie. I, I really, really like it. We wouldn't be able to talk about best records this year. I mean, this has this probably makes into the top ten actually. The incredible PDLIF by Bon Iver. For an artist that didn't release an album this year, he released some fucking brilliant music, and I mean really brilliant, brilliant music. This record in particular, I love the kind of sleazy saxophone that's in it and the weird audio samples. It's oh, so good. Very different to what he put out on the Taylor Swift record, but I, I, I really, 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 really like this. Next up is the wonderful Michael Kiwanuka. He did not release an album this year. It was Mercury. It won the Mercury. It actually came out last year. It's a fantastic, fantastic album. and really is a really well-deserved Mercury Prize winner. However, this year, contender for remix of the year, Final Days, the Bonobo remix. I mean, that's two wonderful artists working together on something that it just works so well. I love this remix so much. This is what Bonobo does absolutely best. Shout out to Red Light Management, who I worked for as an in intern for for a while and worked under Bonobo. And I know that they would have thoroughly loved this collaboration as well. So amazing, amazing record and an amazing remix. Definitely contender for remix of the year without a shadow of a doubt. Next is the wonderful debut album by The Chats. Um, the, the record that I've picked here is The Clap because I think it's brilliant. Maybe it should be Billy Backwash. I'm not sure. It's certainly one of my albums of the year. Uh, I don't do an album of the year because there are too many amazing albums to pick from. So are you a, is it an album of the year? I don't do the, if this is the Mercury's, I don't have a winner. If you shortlist, then you win. And the chats join that list of albums of the year. It is sensational. It is a brilliant debut. And I love every song, rec I love every song on the record. It's like 22 minutes long. Amazing, amazing, loud Aussie punk. I highly recommend going and listening to it if you haven't listened to it. This record, though, The Clap, sensational. Next, we're playing, we're, we're choosing a record uh, by an artist called Tizo Touchdown, who I first heard Zane Lowe play the record Sucker, which sounded like a really weird kind of 80s hip hop. 80s rap I guess is the kind of way I would describe it it sounds like something you would hear on the streets of New York in the 80s it kind of it had a bit of a shit production a cheap production in a very artistic way I really really like it um, and his voice and the way it was delivered is just so new and different and fresh this record though Social Cues it's like he's been listening to Morrissey there is an exceptionally exciting thing happening this year, which I think comes off the back of last year's like Rise of Emo Rap, which is where we're having a lot of black artists that are kind of inspired by hip-hop making not hip-hop, 
making indie, making post-punk, making emo, making post-punk and new wave and just, just some absolutely sensational artists making really, really exciting music. And I think once, when you start to blur the lines between very defined genres like hip-hop and alternative guitar-based music, um, when you start to have a world which is predominantly run by black artists blending into a world which is predominantly run by white artists. Exciting things happen, and I love it. I absolutely love it. So Social Cues by Tizo Touchdown is just... Oh, this is brilliant. I'm really excited to see where he goes next. He is an unpredictable artist, and from what I've heard so far, I just think he's absolutely brilliant. Next is one of BBC Introducing's Sound of 2020 artists, Arlo Parks, who I kind of didn't really get initially until I heard the record Black Dog which was a sensational um, commentary on caring about someone who has mental health issues uh, or is struggling with their mental health um, we all know people that struggle with mental health or have or have been that person themselves I certainly have in the past as well and I think that record just put a wonder put it in, in uh, painted that picture so well and then she followed it up with this record, Hurt, which is just a sensational, sensational record. I cannot get enough of this. I could listen to this over and over and over and over again, and have done a lot, and it's just absolutely brilliant. I love her. I think she's an amazing artist. I'm really excited to see where she takes it from here. One would, one would assume there's going to be an album in the works. Um, I, I just think she's an incredible artist. I'm very excited to see where she goes. One of the stipulations I have for the best of 2020, I don't run it from January to December, I run it from December to the end of November, or like halfway through November. It's a, there's a grey line between where it counts into the next year. Kate Trinada released his follow-up album, Bubba, in like, I think it was like, when was it? It was late November in 2019. Um, his first album was one of my albums of the year in 2017, 2018. Okay, he released it on December the 9th, 20, 2019. So it very comfortably falls into the next year's category for me because you can't feature in the album of, you can't feature in an album of the year for December. Like, you can't because you need some time to get used to the album and to love it. I spend my time in December judging what I'm going to like for the, what, what fits into that that category and December the 9th is just it, it falls short of the cutoff date so it goes into next year a wonderful follow up and if you look at some of the artists that Coach Renata worked with on Bubba they've gone on to be huge already um, Mick Jenkins for example who is just an amazing amazing artist I love this record so much the production is brilliant and it just makes me want to go into some dirty smelly club and just dance all night long and drink really cheap alcohol uh, this is the wonderful Go DJ featuring Sir by Kate Renata. An artist, uh, we, we've, there's been a fair few comebacks this year where artists have been away for a while, dipped off the radar, come back and are now releasing their best material. The Streets and Mike Skinner has not been around since 2010, 2011, 2011 finished touring in 2011. I went and saw his last festival set at Reading in 2011. Uh, he closed the the he, he headlined the Radio One stage on this Sunday just before Muse. It was absolutely brilliant, and I don't think I was ever going to see that again. When he said he was coming back, I was like, "Okay, cool, whatever. He needs some money or whatever." This record is his. It's his second best record maybe third i i love original pirate material i think it's sensational it sounds incredibly british and raw it plays around with loads of different subgenres of, of british music be that grime be that two-step or garage house like he, he he fucks around with the flow a lot and he 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 says he has lyrics which only mike skinner can get away with and this record this album which definitely features as an album of the year record doesn't it continues on that on that same trajectory. Things like "We both say goodbye and then walk in the same direction" is an amazing lyric. This record, "The phone is always in my hand," has a wonderful dark and cold garage beat, and it's just another one of those classic Mike Skinner records. "The phone is always in my hand." If you think I'm ignoring you, I am. I love it so much. This one features Daps on the map, an artist which I assume, along with the other artists that he's worked with, will go on to be rather big. I think he calls this more of a mixtape because he's featuring so many artists. I don't care what it is; it's amazing, and I, I'm just I'm happy to have more Mike Skinner, and I hope we see more of him in the future. This this one though brilliant debut album of the year has to go to sports team also nominated for a mercury this time last year they were but a wee little band we had put out a video for them at, for wtf 
in series one and I loved them from the get-go when I first had Kutcher in 2017 I think it was um and to see them then go on to be the band they are now last November I saw them supported by Alfie Templeman in a tiny venue in Leeds it was absolutely incredible and now to think both of those artists are huge they've gone on to be massive massive artists um what record do you pick from deep down happy I think it's gotta be here's the thing an artist which I kind of discovered in the latter part of the year, and which is a rare thing for me to do, but an artist which I started playing and then realised I had four or five records of his in my library, is the wonderful Barty Strange. Just, again, falls into this category of amazing black artists inspired by hip-hop, but not making hip-hop. Um, and I don't... I, I, not that I ever want to get into a conversation where we're categorising people by their race, but I just... I find that... Um, I find this kind of dialogue really interesting, and I think that wonderful hap- things happen when you blur the lines of genre uh, he's making wonderful indie blues rock and roll um but also some of the lyrics just sound straight out of like rap records they do that i see you brilliant and i think that that's just a really interesting thing this record far is beautiful it starts off as a kind of acoustic record which is really not my thing and then halfway through builds and builds into this epic number it's absolutely sensational. So far by Barty Strange absolutely makes it into the top 50 of the year. My most listened to record this year, and this is probably just because it literally is two minutes and 19 seconds, comes from Buddy. Now, Buddy has been on the journey and has been part of the music club since the start of Music Club. Since the first video I put out, um, Come Find Me, it was just one of my favourite records. He's just a sensational rapper from Compton. His debut album was all right. Um, there are three records that could have made it onto this list. I only allow one per artist. We've got a little hiccup there, but, but I'll explain later. But Buddy, Glitch... Tinashe, I could just listen to on repeat. The production is phenomenal. It's one of those I love listening to really, really loud. Just absolutely sensational. Uh, I listened to this record 75 times this year, apparently. Play counts on iTunes. Next is the wonderful return of Declan McKenna. I was struggling to figure out which records to put on, and then I realised that the, re- the, the Tasha remix uh, of The Key to Life on Earth is the record that I listened to the most. It also featured an early episode of Music Club FM. It's just sensational. This is the kind of house that I absolutely love. Really kind of euphoric and big. It builds, it flows well, it goes somewhere, it does things. I love this as a remix. Absolutely sensational. And Declan McKenna's second album zeros was just a highlight of the year i don't think it was probably one of my albums of the year i think if you spoke to my little brother he would say it was um, but not not one for me i do really like it it just doesn't hit that point but the the singles he put out and this remix is absolutely incredible a hero's death by fontaine's dc wow i was not expecting a comeback from them so quick i thought we'd wait until next year for that uh really really shocked by them putting this out in the middle of the lockdown and just kind of going yeah we've done it and we're putting it out uh, as an album it's it's a big evolution for them and their singles were very dark and different for them but they're a band that's growing and just becoming more and more cult in my opinion so much more than boys of the better land um, they were my favorite artists to do the wtf episode about last year in season two we did some great artists but that one was one that i just got obsessed about with their first album and their second album i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed uh favorite record hero's death i think it's absolutely wonderful next oh so a few years back i discovered bleachers and jack antonov jack antonov is an artist who's worked as a songwriter with everyone you can think of charlie xcx um carly ray jepson uh taylor swift as his own outfit he was part of fun he then went and formed the band bleachers which had this real kind of 80s new jersey vibe about them and they're wonderful this record features the boss the hero that is bruce springsteen from a production level i love how jack antonov is the the main singer and then bruce springsteen is the backing singer and it, he definitely has that bruce springsteen growl in the background you know he's there and then halfway through it switches and it is just sensational it is sensational it's a wonderful piece of of engineering and production the record is absolutely brilliant i love every single second of this song what a wonderful collaboration chinatown by bruce springsteen and bleachers incredible an artist which i have not done any more research on since since i became pretty obsessed with this is the wonderful oscar jerome this record your saint featuring brother portrait is just one of those kind of funk it's very english it's one of those kind of funk 
inspired acoustic y bluesy records that are just so great uh, i love the drum pattern in this um it just keeps building for me and i love i love the use of guitar and, and everything else that goes with it it's just a sensational record one that i woke up with in the middle of the night and went i need to find out what that song is right now because it's absolutely brilliant i love it so much this is your saint featuring brother portrait by oscar jerome a sensational sensational record this year wonderful may the first by royal yellow an irish artist that we featured on music club fm introduced to me by annie mac apparently this was featured in that rec in that show different people just i love this kind of marabou state zero seven bonobo kind of thing going on i love it so much it's absolutely brilliant Next is a collaboration I never thought would happen, but has happened, and that is Bonobo and Totally Enormous Extinct Dinosaurs. I did say that two us don't feature on the same list. This Bonobo did a remix, and he has his own record with another artist, so I'm counting it. Um, this record, Heartbeat Heartbreak, is an absolutely sensational song. I think it's I think it's such a good like electro rave record it sounds so much like both of them as well it, it really does showcase the two artists and their sound and what i love about production i remember this happening with pendulum and the prodigy actually certain synth sounds belong to certain producers and when they collaborate they kind of are there singing by themselves with each other and this is such a teed record and such a bonobo record maybe a little bit more teed than it is bonobo the second record they released is at nine thousand feet or something is more bonobo than it is teed but both of them feature on both records so much i love it so much this is electronic production collaboration at its best it would be foolish to talk about this year and not mention the incredible georgia smith uh rose rouge what i love about this record is that she doesn't fear stepping back and letting instruments talk this by the way this is through and through a jazz record let's let's not muck around here this is through and through a sexy jazz record but georgia smith is a singer right she's a singer and a songwriter and most singer and songwriters leave their voice out the forefront this record shows it's got one line and she repeats it and she steps back and lets the sax and the trumpet do the talking and it is just how it should be sometime this is a masterpiece of a record this is absolutely in the top 10 for the year and it's just a sensational sensational record she is quickly becoming one of my favorite uk artists fuck adele and all that singers i'm not a big fan of but georgia smith amazing some other women that are just are breaking boundaries for me and really altering the history books are the incredible Haim. They released their third album this year, Women in Music Part 3, a record which I think really puts them on the map. It shows their evolution and each record they released as part of that is sensational. They are now, without a doubt, a headline band. And the fact that they haven't been booked to headline Reading this year, next year, is foolish in my book. These are excuses we can make here. Oh, perhaps they didn't want to do it. Bullshit. Bullshit. Festival Republic should be booking home yesterday to headline. They are fucking amazing. Absolutely amazing. And this record, The Steps, is so good. It's so good. The drum is amazing. The way it builds is brilliant. I just, I love the merit, the, the, the kind of, the delivery, everything about it. I love it so much. This is the incredible The Steps by Haim. A real surprise record for me this year is an Oasis record. We played this in an early episode of Music Club FM, um, but to have Noel Gallagher say, oh, we had this demo that we recorded in Japan um, before a gig and we, we never released it, it felt very needed during lockdown this year. The kind of meaning behind the record, don't stop being happy, is the most important message that we should have. And I really appreciate the kind of the tone of it it's so oasis this could be released in 1994 it was amazing we could release it today and it, it was amazing so i i love this record so much so so much good god i want oasis to get back together another artist that was recommended to me i think by one of you guys um was the incredible love you buy by larry pink the human a kind of side project from laurie of of slaves definitely not a big bolshe english punk record but still a beautiful record and uh, a beautiful outfit none the, none the least he decided he wanted to make some music that sounded like it would be on a soundtrack i really hope i get to see this live next year all of the records that that they've put out as larry pink the human is absolutely sensational but this record love you bye oh it's amazing another contender for remix of the year is the foals remix of dark days by local natives featuring sylvian esso ah oh, man Again, this is the kind of 
deep house that I absolutely love. I could listen to this on repeat. It's absolutely beautiful. You can really hear the kind of Yanis influence from Foles. And of course, Local Natives are an amazing band and uh, just, just brilliant. What a year it's been for Phoebe Bridges. What a year it's been for Phoebe Bridges. She's just kind of gone from being a small little artist with one album to the biggest thing in like emo alternative music. Uh, her second album just had, just came with some critical acclaim. The record Kyoto, which obviously features in my top 50, is a sensational album. It's a sensational record. She's gone on to uh, go to support 1975 on a future tour dates she's started a record label and but and, and signed some incredible artists like Shelley and Claude just what a year she's had and Kyoto definitely belongs in the top 50 of the year uh one of the first bands that I interviewed as part of Music Club FM was The Clockworks they have had a, a storm of a year an absolute storm of a year every record they've put out has been absolutely wonderful I think they're going to go on to be do really big things next year and can I speak to a manager we've all been there right if you've worked in any form of service industry then you have had to deal with the fucking people that want to speak to a manager but equally you've been on the other end of that where people are just being a pain in the ass and you just want to get something done I love this record so much uh, and there were lovely guys to speak to so I hope that we get to catch up with them again next year and I hope that we see some more from them I mean, when I think about kind of 80s hip-hop, I don't think about 2020. <laughs> but this year's had some real kind of throwback-sounding records. None more than Carrot Cake by Pan Amsterdam and Guts. This record is sensational. He's a jazz artist, decided to make some hip-hop records. I love this so much. I absolutely love this record so much. I've listened to it so many times. It is brilliant. The Psychedelic Porn Crumpets might make the best new band name of the year for me. They're from Australia. Um, they've put out some really cool new records. I think they've got a new album coming out next year. Uh, this record, Mr. Prism, came out this year and is absolutely sensational. They have that really big, bouncy... If you like King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, they're your kind of thing. Amal and the Sniffers. I think they're just that kind of thing. Mr. Prism by Psychedelic Porn Crumpets. Oh, God, I hope we see more of them next year. The Return of Shame. Shame, Alphabet by Shame, what a sensational record. I love this song so much. Uh, they were my only album of the year in 2018. I felt like every other artist didn't put out a very good album in 2018. Shame put out their debut album and it was amazing. I missed them at Reading. It was a big mistake. It won't ever happen again, don't worry. They are just so exciting. I love them to bits and I'm really excited to see where their second album takes them. I think they're really fun. The Avalanches came back a few years ago for the first time in like 15 years uh, and this year have worked with some really cool artists. Really, really cool. Two big records from that, Running Red Lights featuring Rivers Como, which featured on the Music Club. This record, though, Wherever You Go, is a bloody gorgeous record featuring Jamie XX, Nina Cherry and Calypso. I've listened to this so many times. The bouncy bass line is what makes it. It is such a great record and I'm excited to see where they take it. Last year, I spent a lot of time looking at kind of drill artists going, I don't understand it. This year, PA Salu and SL put out the wonderful hit, The Block. I mean, drill makes sense to me now. This record's a heavy hitter. And everything that both SL and PA, PA Salu and Parcel have put out has been so good. My Family is another record that I'm obsessed with. I love everything that they touch. I'm really excited to see where they go next year because I think that they'll be big, big artists next year. Um, and I just think this record is such a banger. One of my favourite records of the year, easily, Tropical Fuckstorm and Lonely Ghost. This is a record, one of those records that has a wonderful production. It builds, it builds, it gets more distorted, it's delivered incredible, the vocal on it is sensational. I just, uh, this is such a bit of me. I love this record so much. It, oh, oh. Tash Sultana, doing what Tash Sultana does. This year I've been in miserable England dreaming of being back in Australia and Tash Sultana gives me a little bit of that sunshine. Uh, returning with that wonderful record Pretty Lady which is just amazing. That ending is just, it, this, was sound, this was Song of the Summer, easy. Easy Song of the Summer, Tash Sultana, Pretty Lady. Okay, Getz has two records on this list and there's two reasons. One because Mozambique featuring JK and Mood Charlesonelli is a masterpiece of a record. It is a masterpiece of a record and of course it features in the top 50. He is the most underrated grime MC, I think, in the world. He is just so brilliant and this record I love. I love the collaboration. I love it, the production, especially as it flips towards the end. It's so good. I love it to absolute bits. The other record we'll come to in a minute. Uh, Shine by Joey Badass, sample of the year. Just fucking belter in it. Absolutely love this hip hop record. Um, 
uh, he's just such a good MC, and what a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful record. Okay, house record of the year. Easy. DJ Streaks, best rapper alive. I've listened to this over and over and over and over and over again. This was a dance record of the summer. Kitchen Raves, the whole lot. I absolutely think this is sensational. Everything else he's done as well, or she, has been amazing. Um, but yeah, DJ Streaks, what an artist that I've never heard of, but I absolutely love. The next record is absolutely one of another amazing, amazing collaboration, but features probably my favourite artist of the year, and that is Nothing Nowhere featuring Kenny Hoopla and Judge. Um, the record is called Blood. I think this is just a wonderful Blink-182 meets the used emo era kind of record, um, but has that thing that Kenny Hoopla does that's amazing. Nothing Nowhere fits into that category really well for me already, but Kenny Hoopla jumps around this kind of indie emo kind of vibe that I just absolutely adore. I can't believe I just said vibe. I hate that word. Blood is absolutely one of the best records of the year. I just adore it. I can listen to it on repeat. I think it's just brilliant. And the music video is so much fun as well. I love the music video. Bickle, Naked, what an amazingly fun record. This featured in a very early episode of Music Club FM, and it's just a really fun, disco-y kind of indie record. I, yeah, this kind of thing is abs It's just such a me record. Such a me record. I adore it to bits, um, and had to feature in this playlist. The Return of Idols was one of my favourite things this year. Uh, they are just one of my favourite bands of all time. Um, I was so ready for album three by them, and it is Without a doubt, one of the albums of the year, Mr. Motivator, the first record they released, was so much fun. So much fun. It talk, goes over all the different cliches that are in the world, and it's just a bit of a silly record. But they also do some amazing serious stuff as well, which I absolutely love about, about Idols. I, 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 look, I just... Oh, I'm gushing a lot, a lot about all these records because they're so good, but Idols and Mr. Motivator, it's just absolutely outstanding. An amazing new artist that I discovered this year from Dev from Radio 1 on a Sunday afternoon is the wonderful Baklava, this record Back to Then, which has this really cool 80s disco feel, um, kind of Acid house E kind of thing. I, I just really, really, really enjoy it. Um, really cool breakbeat. This kind of new rave sound that's coming, it's kind of new, not N-U rave, but N-E-W comma rave sound. New rave sound that's happening at the moment is really exciting with people like Prosper, uh, Baklava, falls into the, that category and yeah so cool and her voice is wicked she sounds loads like Kalela which I think is an, another amazing amazing artist so oh such a cool record this record I discovered last week or the week before and one of my favorite tv shows this year has been The Mandalorian I'm a massive Star Wars geek as is my brother as is my girlfriend she would never admit it but she is um The Mandalorian <coughs> was so much fun one of my favorite things about The Mandalorian is that is the music. It has this real the good, the bad, the ugly feel to it, whilst also being um just incredible score. Like and it feels very very Star Wars as well. They've done a really good he's done a really good job of it. Ludwig Ludwig I can't remember his name. Ludwig something or other. He's the guy who did the Black Panther soundtrack and he did Creed and he did Fruitville Station, lots of Michael B. Jordan films. He also produced Redbone by Charles Gambino. Um, so the man is just a very, very, very talented musician. He did the soundtrack to The Mandalorian, which I just love. And then last week, I found this page called Closed on Sundays on YouTube. Shout out to Closed on Sundays. This guy just does really cool Dilla sounding, J Dilla sounding Star Wars bootlegs. And his version of The Mandalorian is just stunning. I love it. This is absolutely exceptional. This is The Mandalorian Star Wars, Star Wars Lo-Fi by Closed on Sundays. We couldn't talk about this year and not talk about the wonderful return of Tame Impala. He put out, um, he was re releasing new music at the middle of last year while we were in Australia and records like Borderline and <clears throat> I just think did a really, really good job with some of those records he put out last year. Was so excited for this new album of his and it absolutely makes it onto the album of the year list. Every record is stunning. It's so summer. It's his fourth album? I think just there are two artists that I'm gagging to see live. One of them is Bon Iver and the other is Time Impala. I absolutely adore them. Absolutely adore them. I wish that I think Time Impala should have been booked headline reading next year. It's my opinion. I think that he's just exceptional. Favourite record on the album? I couldn't put any of the he released last year. Um and I was tossing up between Is It Real? Um not Is It Real. I was tossing up between a, this record and another one and I had to go with Lost in Yesterday. What a belter. This one here is an artist called Laurel. She's from Southampton, represents Southampton. The record Screen Drive Faster. She released her debut album a couple of years back and Lauren, my girlfriend, loved it. Um, 
And she, uh, Lauren said this, the minute she heard this record, she said, it's amazing when an, an artist that you absolutely adore comes back and then you're a little bit nervous that it's not going to be very good. And then it's better. So the times that happen are very few and far, far between. Um, but Scream Drive Faster by Laurel is just a corker and an amazing evolution for her. Absolutely love this record. A really, really, really great discovery for me this year was Black Star Kids, a really cool group of artists that, that have worked together. The Sign to Dirty Hit released their debut album. This record, K- Kikai Kasai, is just absolutely brilliant. A wonderful kind of new wave hip-hop meets indie record. Again, fits into that wonderful category of really cool black artists making not hip-hop. And like I like I said earlier, I don't want this to become like a, a conversation about race, but it's exciting when that when those those lines get blurred with genre um, and I just think this is just uh, absolutely exceptional dance record of the year hands down goes to Marabou State and their record Mother we featured this on quite an early episode of Music Club FM um, Marabou State I loved some of their early stuff I used to run a promotional night in Bath called Blank Canvas and I used to play a lot of Marabou State when I DJ'd at it uh, they've gone on and evolved as artists that are absolutely brilliant this record Mother is fucking amazing and it samples it uses the same sample as spies by your side which i just think is absolutely sensational but they, what they've done with it is just so different and i love it this is mother by marabou state flume bringing back bringing it back making drum and bass records with tori moy on the on the difference what a sensational sensational record when lauren likes a record that's a drum and bass record you know it's going to be a good one this is one of those records, and I like Flume playing around at this tempo. It's a lot of fun. Um, another artist that I've kind of started cropping up on mini music playlists and stuff and being played in, in, in radio shows that I've been hearing and going, I really like this, is an artist called Gene Dawson. Real Morrissey-sounding Britpop post-punky... Uh, yeah, that's how I would describe it. This record, Devilish, is just absolutely sensational. We played it on recently on Music Club FM... Um, just really, 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 really cool. I'm really excited to see where he takes it next, but this record is fucking great. Tom Mish and Yousef Days, they came back this year and released one of the albums of the year. Absolutely sensational album. Last 100, probably my favourite record taken from it. The guitar solo is amazing. The drums are beautiful. I could gush over this album all day. It's such a good summer record. Tom Mish and Yousef Days, sensational. Mick Jenkins, the most underrated American rapper at the moment, releases a new record like every week at the moment and is brilliant. Also recently featured on Disclosure's new album. This record, Front Street Freestyle, I'm pretty sure is produced by Kate Trinada. It's fucking awesome. It's fucking awesome. Actually, it definitely is because the beat is in in Bubba. It's on uh, on Kate Trinada's album, Bubba. Um, So I just, yeah, I love this. This record... Too Shy, if you're too shy, by 1975, nearly didn't make it on this list because I forgot about it. Turns out, it's not actually in my library. But I think is their best record to date, maybe. Oh, ooh, that's hard. But it's so good. It's definitely the best record on that album. Um, Notes on a Conditional Form is such a weird record for me. It's so ups and downs, smiles and frowns. I think that it's distinctly average in places, like I think a lot of the 1975 records are. But when they smack it, they absolutely smack it out of the park. This is one of those records that absolutely smacks out of the park. I bloody love this song so much. Probably record of the year. There's no probably about it. Plastic Door by Kenny Hoopla is the record of the year. It just is. I loved How Can I Rest in Peace if I'm Buried by the Highway. Um, The rest of the EP is absolutely brilliant. It's definitely the EP of the year. But Plastic Door is just... It's so good. Uh, I enjoy it more watching that cool live version of it on YouTube where it's like filmed in film in that really cool warehouse. It's it's just brilliant. If you like this, go and check that video out. Hands down, the album artist I'm excited for most next year and definitely one to watch. He said he's releasing an album next year. That's really exciting. I just love everything this guy touches. I think he's brilliant. And this record is just the best record of the year. Plastic Door by Kenny Hoopla. So that's it. That's my top 50. Um... I've not put many out, many records out, many videos out this year because it's been a weird year, and I've had two jobs recently, three jobs recently, 
I really want to do more of this, but trying to find time is really hard. So I will promise that we'll try and do some more. We've got WTF Series 2 to look forward to. We've got Reading and Leeds 2021 and loads of artists to do for that, which is going to be great. There's been so many good records this year. There's a link to this playlist in the description below. There will be a playlist with a long list as well of 150 records that I just I just adored this year. And I think that um, if you enjoy any of these, then you should go and check that out. Wonderful blend of all different genres and from all different walks of life. Um, so, yeah, just uh, what a year for music 2020 has been. It's been a shit year for a lot of people, but music-wise has been the best in a very, very long time. What a fantastic year for music. I hope that 2021 brings you all your dreams and everything you want. Uh, thank you to anyone that watches this video. I really appreciate it. Uh, we'll continue to make some more going into 2021. Um yeah, I'm waffling on now. I'm going to go get drunk because it's New Year's Eve. Have a happy new year and I'll see you next year. Cheers. Bye.